Cyclosporine is an immunosuppressant drug primarily used in the prevention of transplant rejection. There's a lot you need to know about cyclosporine, so I'll share my visual mnemonic to help you remember all the information needed for testing. Oh, man. So I've just finished the first leg of the cyclosport, the famous French bike race. Take a look at that giant banner that reads cyclosport. By the way, this cyclosport race is our symbol for cyclosporine, an important drug you need to remember on test day. Cyclosport for cyclosporine. Now look at this cane in my hands. Since these cyclosport races are so long and intense, my legs were super shot after racing, to the point where I needed a cane to help me walk. Well, a cane also happens to be Pixarize's recurring symbol for immunosuppression. Since immunosuppression refers to a weakened immune system, and a cane is used when someone is too weak to walk, right? Cyclosporin causes immunosuppression. The immune suppression caused by cyclosporin is useful in many contexts, but you'll really only see two ever in medical school. First, and most importantly, cyclosporin can help prevent or slow down the course of transplant rejection. Second, cyclosporin can treat autoimmune diseases like the vasculitides, where most of the damage is mediated by autoimmunity. This is pretty self-explanatory, so I won't waste too much time here. Let's move on. All right, now check out all these team aides helping me race at the cycle sport. Since the cycle race happens in France, it makes sense that these aides are French. And just as you'd expect from French people, these aides are fashionable, wearing these snazzy cow necks. By the way, the cow neck coincidentally helps me remember calcineurin, because cow neck sounds like calcineurin. Next, Notice how one of these cow-necked Frenchmen is trying to shave my legs to make me more uh, aerodynamic or something. Of course, I'm angrily telling him to leave. My leg hair is my manly pride, after all. This waving off or dismissal of a cow-necked wearing side represents inhibition of calcineurin, get it? Because I'm blocking the cow-necked guy from doing what he wants to do. Calcineurin is an enzyme important for IL-2 production in T-cells and cyclosporin works by inhibiting calcineurin. To achieve this, cyclosporin actually binds to a molecule called cyclophilin to form a complex. It is this complex that then goes on to inhibit calcineurin. However, cyclophilin is pretty low yield and also starts with the word stem cyclo, so we didn't really think it needed its own symbol. Just remember cyclosporin and calcineurin. Let's see what happens as a result of calcineurin inhibition. Take a look at my shoes over there. My feet were blistering after the race, so I took off my shoes and dropped them in the corner. Do you see how these shoes are tied together? You might even say that they are a pair of interlocking shoes. Well, these dropped pair of interlocking shoes are our symbol for fallen interleukin-2, since interlocking objects are our symbol for the interleukins, while shoe rhymes with the number 2. It's the interleukin-2 interlocking shoes. Cyclosporin use leads to a fall in IL-2 level. Recall from our IL-2 video that IL-2 is needed for the growth and differentiation of T-cells. IL-2 production is dependent on calcineurin, and we know that cyclosporin inhibits calcineurin. Therefore, by inhibiting calcineurin, cyclosporin indirectly blocks IL-2 production. Ultimately, this stops T-cell growth and stimulation, limiting the adaptive immune response. This is helpful when we are trying to downregulate the immune response, which is exactly what immunosuppressants are for. Now, let's talk about a host of side effects seen with cyclosporin use that you should remember for test day. Take a look at the water pouch I dropped over there. Cyclists always need to be well hydrated for races, right? Well, this particular water pouch is kidney-shaped to represent the kidney. Since the pouch has been dropped and it even looks like it's spilling, this picture reminds me of nephrotoxicity, one of the main adverse side effects of cyclosporin. Cyclosporin causes interstitial nephritis which is inflammation of the spaces in between the tubules in the kidneys. Although you don't really need to worry about the exact mechanism, just understand that cyclosporin impairs the function of the kidney. Therefore, you should expect a bump in creatinine, or BUN, in patients taking cyclosporin. Alright, now check out this stick of butter in my hand. Yeah, I, I know it's a bit gross, but I'm biting right into the stick of butter. The high fat in butter provides lots of energy for cycling. Well, high fat coincidentally helps me remember the hyperlipidemia or increased blood lipid levels seen with cyclosporin use. 
Just remember this high-fat butter stick to remember hyperlipidemia is an adverse side effect of cyclosporine. Afterward, notice the bubble gum in my mouth. To get rid of the taste of eating straight butter, I also chew on gum. This bubble gum is actually our symbol for gingival hyperplasia, since gingiva is just a fancy term for your gums. And I'm blowing this bubble which reminds me of gum tissue overgrowth, which is what gingival hyperplasia really means. Gingival hyperplasia is one of those weird side effects that test writers tend to like, so you should definitely remember it for test day. Okay, it looks like we've come full circle back to my legs. If you've ever biked or swam, you know that shaving your legs helps improve your speed. But, ugh, gosh, I really don't want to remove this beautiful leg hair. By the way, the hairy legs also happens to be our symbol for hirsutism, which is just a fancy term for excessive hair growth. As another weird side effect, hirsutism is another that you should definitely know for test day. Okay, now check out my blistered big toes. My shoes were actually too tight and caused these painful, swollen big toes. The swollen big toes also remind me of podagra and gout. You see, gout is another potential adverse effect of cyclosporin. Cyclosporin use can increase uric acid levels, and when this uric acid crystallizes in the joints, it produces gout. Next, let's turn to my mechanic over here pumping the tires. If you've ever biked before, you'd know that fully pressurized tires help you ride faster. As such, my mechanic is really straining, putting my tires under extremely high pressure. Well, this high pressure actually reminds me of hypertension, since hypertension just refers to high blood pressure. Hypertension is yet another adverse side effect of cyclosporin. While the mechanism is unclear, it is thought to involve systemic and renal vasoconstriction induced by cyclosporin. I wouldn't focus too much on the mechanism. Just remember that hypertension can be seen with cyclosporin use. Okay, lastly, let's take a look at the broken ribbon at the finish line. Wait, this actually isn't a ribbon, it's a wire that I snapped earlier. Maybe they use a wire instead of a ribbon to electronically record who finished the race first. In any case, this wire is frayed which nicely serves as our symbol for neurotoxicity. You know, a frayed wire for neurotoxicity. Nerves conduct electrical impulses, kind of like wires, right? Neurologic symptoms in patients taking cyclosporin usually manifest as peripheral neuropathy, although CNS symptoms like ataxia and encephalopathy can also be seen. For test day, just picture this frayed wire to remember that cyclosporin can potentially cause neurotoxicity. Okay. So that's it for cyclosporin. Let's recap quickly so I can get back to training. Cyclosporin is an immunosuppressant drug that's used to prevent transplant rejection and also to treat autoimmune diseases. It suppresses the immune system by inhibiting calcineurin, an enzyme necessary for IL-2 production. By inhibiting calcineurin, cyclosporin leads to a fall in IL-2 levels, which impairs T-cell growth and activation. This results in an overall suppression of the immune response. However, cyclosporin does come with many adverse effects, of which the most important to remember are nephrotoxicity, gout or hyperuricemia, gingival hyperplasia, and hirsutism. Less important side effects to remember are hyperlipidemia, neurotoxicity, and hypertension. And that's it for this cycle race. My legs could really use a break. I'll catch you in the next race. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also support our team by visiting pixarize.com, where you'll find exclusive videos and interactive review images. If you like what we're doing, share with your friends on social media, and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.